so dear students uh, this is a very interesting chapter current trends and technologies chapter number 13 while other chapters of 11 standard you have already seen they are not so interesting right while uh, this is very much interesting so we let's begin now the first thing is that uh, today technology has become an integral part of our human lives lives we cannot say that uh, we can remain apart from the technology yes if you want to remain apart from technology you can go to the jungle and do whatever you like right no aspect of uh, human lives have remained untouched from it the speed with which the technology changes is just unpredictable whatever thing every few months we hear about a new technology coming into the market suppose today you purchase a mobile of best quality but after few months or few years that technology that capacity mobile that uh, mobile will get outdated and you will try to purchase new mobile so not only the mobile phone but uh, technology is uh, growing at a very rapid speed in this chapter we will look at some emerging technologies in the field of computing entity recognition digital photography and data storage so these are the main topics of this chapter now emerging trends in computing from the four topics we begin with the emerging trends in computing now any activity that we perform with the use of computer is generally termed as computing though the activities may vary from user to user but then to everything is known as computing now there are different categories of uh, computer the textbook have given some categories of computer that is super computers main frame computers mini computers micro computers and mobile computers the first four category requires good amount of space according to the textbook now first we have a look at the super computer here you can see the images of super computer it is very big in size uh it requires a space like a big hall and uh, so much uh, mechanism is there in ninth standard i have taught super computer in detail this is also the image of a super computer which is in japan now a super computer is a computer that performs at a, at or near the currently highest operational rate for computers traditionally super computers have been used for scientific and engineering applications that must uh, handle very large database or to do a great amount of computations means where you need to process so much data where your computer will not work in those places such as weather forecasting and such thing super computers are used here you can see that uh, the cpu type of part of the super supercomputer is open now we have one small cpu while here in supercomputers there are so many cpus so many hard disk and uh, very this thing now the uses of supercomputer as i told you just now for weather forecasting now if the weather is to be forecasted first thing is you need to collect the regular images uh from uh, this thing the satellite then you need to collect the temperatures and the amount of wind flow and the amount of humidity and all these things from different parts right suppose you just talk about if you want to forecast the weather of a country then you need to collect the data from all the parts of the country then process that data compare that data with the past data that if the wind flow in this direction was this much if the temperature was this much then what can you predict right and for this all things our computer is very 
small it cannot do then for uh, nuclear research also super computer is used then here you can see the image of the another type of computer which is known as main frame computer this is also very big in size not as big as super computer but bigger than our personal computer this is also the image of uh, this thing main frame computer one more image of main frame computer now we try to understand what it is main frames also called big iron are powerful computers used for large information processing job they are mainly used by government institutions and large companies for tasks such as census industry and consumer statistics enterprise resource planning and financial transaction processing after that the third category is mini computer now what is a mini computer i don't understand actually it is not there in the use right now then also the textbook i have included mini computer so first we have a look at what is mini computer this type of thing is known as mini computer it was existing in 1960s then two textbook has included it right now as one category of computer a mini computer is a class of smaller computers that was developed in mid 1960s and sold for much less than mainframe and mid size computers from IBM and its direct competitors then comes micro computer or desktop computer which we are using i don't need to explain you anything over here a micro computer is a small relatively in uh, uh, less expensive computer with microprocessors as its central processing unit one more image of uh, desktop computer then mobile computing now mobile is also that is smartphone is uh, one type of computer only you can do most of the functions uh, which are there in the computer are available in the mobile phone smartphones also nowadays and so many things which are not there in the uh, not possible in the desktop computer is also possible in uh, mobile phones now the major impact of mobility came with the invention of laptop computers and wireless communication with availability of communication technologies like bluetooth wifi gps etc and cellular data services like 3g 4g etc has changed the scenario completely this technology combined with the nano technology and has given rise to miniature devices smartphones and tablets are such two great inventions of this era in mobile computing now mobile today have revolutionized the use of computers and requires minimum space smart mobile computing devices are indeed one of the game changing product of recent times the smartphone uh, mobile devices comes with an inbuilt operating system and set of applications now if you compare it with the older type of mobile phones okay then those mobile phone had not got a specific operating system and you were not free to install different applications actually then uh, when the mobile was invented newly there were no applications at all company used to give some facilities which we were able to use we cannot install anything new that was the thing while right now with the smartphone you get all this facility in built operating system and set of applications operating system that are widely used are android ios windows etc the term communication in this section means capabilities such as internet connectivity and phone usage now the main two functions of a smartphone are first thing is uh, phone usage you can communicate with the phone and message right and another thing is uh, internet connectivity 
Now, if even one or two days, if internet connectivity is not there, then uh, you will feel uncomfortable. That much is the importance of internet. Now, mobile devices are becoming omnipresent and are reaching to the remotest areas of the world. Here you can see the image. The person is carrying the disc, right? Then here the villagers are also using the smartphone and they are not using it for communication but are watching a song or movie or something or are reading a joke. Even this old lady is comfortable to communicate using mobile phone. So it is reaching to the remotest areas of the world. Due to the limitless capabilities that is provided to the large amount of population. It has become a necessary tool to, of our life. First we used to say air, water and uh, food is the basic necessity. But right now the thing has changed one, changed. one more thing has been added that is smartphone. You cannot survive without a smartphone even. The main benefit mobile phone gives us is that the we can do the things without being restricted to one place for example if you want to do some work on computer then you will have to sit against the desktop wherever it is there right you will have to wait for the power supply if there is no electric current you will not be able to work while in mobile phone this thing is not there once you charge the mobile phone you can take it to any place and do any sort of work you like today with the availability of various kinds of mobiles one can accomplish assigned tasks from any part of the world and uh, right now when the corona period was going on at that time also if you remember the concept of work from home had come people were not able to go to the offices right to maintain the social distance and uh, so many things then people were given the task that you work from home home no problem at all so this thing this whole thing is possible with the availability of internet and mobility. It has become a necessary tool of uh, this time due to its high usage. Now one more thing is the usage of mobile phone also is increasing day by day. Suppose if you see in past if you want to communicate with anybody okay now if that person is not having the telephone at his house how will you communicate? Even if you are having a very good quality of telephone, but you will not be able to communicate, right? Well, mobile is such a thing that everyone is having. Every family member is having a separate mobile phone. Mobile trend has become a great success due to the supporting technologies like Wi-Fi and 3G and 4G. They allow an access to uninterrupted connection to the World Wide Web and thus a large pool of information. Some of the standard features that almost all mobile networks today support are SMS, GPRS, MMS, Bluetooth and WAP. Now here today we I keep this video up till here in the next period or in the next lecture we will discuss all these things in detail. Thank you. Goodbye.